Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Max, and in this tutorial series I'm going to try to show you how to turn this bottle into, this one, by using 3ds Max and V-Ray Renderer. Ok so, let's get started. I have 3dx Max open here and we'll start from scratch. All I have is this bottle as a reference and, this PNG file to use as a label. Today, we are going to try to recreate this bottle in 3D and we'll start with the modeling part. So, I have 3ds Max open here. I use as units and unit setup, centimeters, and system unit setup centimeters, in case you want to work in the same scale as I do. I'm going to create a plane in the middle of the scene. Let's make it 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Let's push this button to maximize all viewports and move this plane in the origin by right clicking these spinners. Let's maximize the viewport. I always try to get rid of this cage so I press Shift J to hide it. Ok. Now, I'm going to open the material editor by pressing M or by pressing this button right here. I don't like using the slate material editor so I always change it to compact material editor. I'll take the first material here and load a bitmap into the base color slot and use the reference image of the bottle. Let's apply this material to our plane. Now, as you can see, the bottle is stretched so we need to apply a UV map modifier. And choose bitmap fit and choose the reference image again. This makes sure the bottle is in the correct proportions. Now, let's move this plane so the bottle rests on the grid here, on the zero on the z-axis. More or less. I'm pressing F for the front view and Z to zoom in and then F4 to see the edge faces. So, this is the zero axis on the X as I can see here the bottle is not right in the middle. So I'll open up the UV map modifier and choose gizmo and move this gizmo. So the bottle is cut in half by this vertical line. It doesn't have to be exact but we try to. Ok. Now we will draw our profile using this plane as reference, but we don't want to select it anymore. So I'll freeze it. To do that go to object properties and choose freeze selection but make sure to uncheck show frozen in grey. If you do not do that, if you do, for example, object properties and choose freeze and have this checked, which is by default, you will not see the image anymore. So, that's the way to do it. So, again object properties freeze, and uncheck show frozen in grey. Ok. Now, we can go to the create tab, in the shapes category and choose the line. I will try to create these profiles, using the line tool. I'll start from here. I'm holding shift to go straight. And also a 90 degrees angle. Ok, right up until here. Let's say the cap is this tick, and go up again. Right click to exit shape creation. Let's press shift J again to get rid of the cage. I want to make sure this vertex is on 0 on the x axis, so I can either put 0 in here, or right click on the spinner. Let's get these corners filleted. I would not fill it this corner, but I will round up this one. So, go here to choose fill it. And fill it for a bit. Something like that. This one too. Give it a fill it. Ok, maybe raise these two a little bit up. And I will also fill it these, but just a tiny bit. To better catch some highlights on this curve, later, at render time. Ok, we have the cap. Let's now create this nozzle thing. 
I will start by making a line again. Start from here. I'm starting the line a little bit away, because the nozzle is turned in the original image, so it looks shorter. To here. To here. Again. Okay, close the spline. Yes. Let's make sure this line will be straight. So, I'm selecting these vertices, and treat them as corners. Then, this one will be a bezier corner. So, I can drag this like that. This will be a bezier corner as well. And I'll drag like this. Let's make this a smooth vertex. And maybe this one, as well, smooth vertex. This will be a bezier corner, and let's try to fix this curve. How about if I delete this? No. That's a bad idea. Let's leave it something like this. Okay, we have the profile for this nozzle. Let's do the bottle now. Go to line. Start somewhere from here. I'm holding shift to make sure I have a straight vertical line. And let's say this stops here. Okay. I'm going into vertex mode. Make sure this one is at zero. Let's select these two vertices and drag them a little bit further on the right. Let's move this up a bit and let's fill it in. Let's fill it this one as well. Okay, how about if we delete this one, and make this curve flow a little bit more natural. And let's fill it this one as well. Now, I see this bottle has a rounded bottom. So I'll raise this vertex up a bit. Make it a bezier corner. Click this square here, and drag this a bit. Maybe it's too high. Something like this. Okay, now let's go to spline. I want to give some thickness to the bottle. So, I'll choose outline, and drag inside just a little bit. Not too much. That's fine. I also want to make the bottom here a little bit thicker. So, I'll go to Vertex. Choose this one and move it up a bit. And let's break these vertices apart by choosing Break. And now, I can choose this segment and delete it. Now, we have completed the profiles for all the parts we need. So, in order to get the shape of the bottle, we will select the profile. Let's name it Bottle. Okay. And, from the modifier list, choose Lathe. Go to the Lathe modifier, Axis, and choose 0 on the X. Let's go to Perspective View, by pressing P, and then press C, to zoom into the object. I can see that my bottle is flipped. So, I'll flip the normals, and weld the core. I'll also give it some more segments. Something like 80 will do. And also, go to the line. Press this button to view the end result. And then, go to the interpolation, and choose more steps. In order to round up this curve, and these curves, as we don't want to see straight lines here. Something like 15 will do. Okay, let's do the same thing for the cap. 
I will copy this lathe modifier. Let's name this cap and paste the lathe modifier here. Okay. Choose the axis in, on the X set it to zero. It's fine, we still have 80 segments. Let's do the same for this curve here, to add more detail. Go to interpolation, and choose 10 steps. There's more than enough. Now, for the nozzle, I will choose the extrude modifier. Let's go to perspective. Drag this, something like this. But first, let's move this plane out of our way. Unfreeze all. Select the plane, and move it backwards, so it doesn't get in our way. And then, right-click somewhere, Object Properties, Freeze again. Now, for the extrude, let's see how much we can extrude this. Let's say, 1.8 it's enough. Now, let's collapse this to an editable poly. Choose this polygon, and this one, and delete them. Actually, let's do only half of this nozzle. So, I'll drag it somewhere in here. And, let's add a symmetry modifier. Okay. But, we will pick the Z-axis. And choose the mirror and move it to zero on the Y-axis. So now, go to Edit Poly again. Select this edge and this edge, and loop them. Without this one, and this one. Now, let's choose bridge. Okay. Now, go to top view by pressing T. I'm going to move these vertices, to approximately zero on the Y. Okay, so now, if I choose, let's say, an FFD 3 times 3 modifier. But, not on this selection, but on the entire editable poly. Go to FFD 3 times 3 control points. Let's go from the top view. And, try to give it this shape. Okay. Go to Perspective by pressing P, and then Z. Let's collapse to Editable Poly. Choose, Do not show this message again. Okay, so now, let's select all the edges. Except for the ones in the middle. I'm holding Ctrl to add to the selection. By the way, if you want to subtract from selection, then hold Alt. This one as well. Let's chamfer them. Not very much, just a little. And, let's give it two segments. Okay. I don't like how it looks here, it's too narrow. So, I will scale it all. First of all though, let's put the pivot in the center. So, go to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot Only. Choose, Center to Object. Okay, so now, let's go to the top view and press F3 to hide the edges. Scale it on the Y axis a bit. Go to perspective view, and let's select these two polygons. And let's inset them for a little bit. Something like this. Now, let's extrude them inward.
Let's see from the left view how this looks, or from the front view, actually. So let's move these a little bit inside, like this. And, maybe, a little bit like this. Okay, so we now have the nozzle. What's now left to do, is the label itself. So, go to the front view. Press Alt X to see through the bottle. Actually, this doesn't help us much. I will just hide the bottle for now, and create a plane, as high as the label is. Okay. Let's move it to zero on the x-axis, and create a duplicate of this material. Call it label. And, let's change the texture with the label 1. And apply this material to the plane. Let's apply a UV map modifier again. Press bitmap fit, and choose the label. Okay, so now our label is in the correct proportion. Let's make this plane a little bit wider. Something like this, it's enough. And let's give it one segment on the horizontal, but many on the vertical. Something like 80. Okay, let's unhide all. Move this label. Move it just about to touch the bottle, but not quite. Go to perspective view now, and let's apply a bend modifier. Let's go for 200 degrees, in the x-axis. Maybe more. Let's see from the top view how much we need to wrap the label around the bottle. Something like this. Maybe, a little bit more. Okay, so now, I'll try to match this corner with the corner of the bottle. This means that the label needs to have less segments on the vertical. So, I will lower these segments, until this corner matches this one as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the corners have to be close to one another in order to avoid overlapping. Okay, now we are there, so let's see what we have for now. Okay, we have a problem here. We need to select these polygons, and scale them on the y-axis. Something like this. Let's select all, group it, and let's name the group, bottle. Let's save our work. Make sure you save more often than I do. So this concludes our first part. We have our bottle and the label modeled. In the next part, I will try to show you how to create a custom HDRI map to use for lighting our bottle. If you like what I try to do here, please like my video, post in the comments if there's something you've missed or if you'd like me to tackle other subjects in 3D. Please share my video, subscribe if you want to, and see you in the next one. Bye.